Bayard Rustin has been called the invisible man of the civil rights movement. He not only organized the March on Washington, he aided iconic figures like Martin Luther King and A. Philip Randolph. But according to Rustin's partner, his sexuality forced him into the shadows. And tonight's first person, Walter Nagel. I'm Walter Nagel, and Bayard Rustin was my partner of 10 years. The first demand is that we have effective civil rights legislation. Bayard Rustin was probably the most important uh, strategist and tactician during that peak period of the civil rights movement. He was largely responsible for organizing some of the most important demonstrations during that period, particularly the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963, where Dr. King gave his most famous I Have a Dream speech. I have a dream today. Many people have said that the March on Washington could not possibly have happened without uh, Bayard's organizing genius. Bayard is largely overlooked or was marginalized during his time because he was a gay man and he was relatively open. It was not something that he was ashamed of. And very often that aspect of his personality was seized upon by enemies, not just of him, but of the movement in general, to discredit the movement. Well, A. Philip Randolph seemed to be very accepting of Bayard. He greatly admired him. He uh, was really, Bayard was really Randolph's closest aide, certainly in the last 20 to 30 years of his life. Uh, he didn't really care. He didn't really seem to care that Bayard was homosexual. Bayard was gay. Uh, Dr. King, on the other hand, Bayard used to say that he didn't feel that Dr. King had any personal problem with his being gay. But at the same time, he was the, he was, uh, the visible leader of a movement, uh, a social movement, but also a political movement. And he had to be careful and aware of possible attacks on the movement. And so he, I think he saw Bayard sometimes as a, a political liability, if you will. So when Bayard became a little bit too visible and perhaps open to attack, he was asked to kind of take a back seat and to step back in the movement, to go back into the shadows. I met Bayard in 1977, quite by chance, in Times Square. Well, in me and Bayard, you had a gay couple, you had an interracial couple, and you also had an intergenerational couple. And so I think there were some challenges that we faced that not every couple faces. At the same time, um, we were very comfortable with each other. We loved each other dearly. We were very relaxed together. His vision was really worldwide. His roots really were in building the world community, building the human community. Two thousand and thirteen was the fiftieth anniversary of the nineteen sixty three March on Washington. President Obama announced that Bard was going to be one of sixteen recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So on November twentieth of two thousand and thirteen, I was at the White House to receive this Medal of Freedom in Bard's memory. It was really a very aff affirming time. You can see more on Bard's life and legacy in the documentary Brother Outsider.